Learning objectives include virus cultures and virus enumeration. Now, viruses, they cannot replicate or multiply outside a host cell. And that is the, the reason that they need cells to grow. So, the cells are available in the animals, embryonated eggs, and cell cultures. So, these are the three sources on which the virus can grow or can be grown. Cell culture can originate from plant cells or from animal cells. In embryonated hen eggs, uh, when the embryo is developing, it has various sites for viral replication or it supports various viruses at various sites. As you can see, these needles basically are telling us that these are potential sites where we can inoculate the virus for replication of the viruses or for culturing of the viruses. So there's the vir some viruses like to grow in the yolk sac. Some grow on this membrane, which is called coriolentoic membrane. Some grow in this cavity, which is called allentoic cavity. And some even grow in this cavity, which is called amniotic cavity. Similarly, this is a picture of a cell culture. These could be, or this is basically, these are animal cell culture. Cells could, could be harvested from various organs and could be cultivated in the lab if you provide uh, necessary nutritional uh, material to the cells. And you meet all those requirements that are needed for cell culture. And these cells can support uh, viral growth. Although not shown here, animals, whole animals, like dogs, cats, rats, uh, lab animals, they can be used for viral replication or multiplication also. There are viruses that infect bacteria, and those viruses are called bacteriophages. This is a plate where bacteria, bacteria are also cells. They were cultivated in a form of a lawn, a smooth lawn, and then various dilution of the bacteriophages were, were poured onto these plates. And this is one of those plates showing these clear halos or clear areas. Each one of this, these areas basically is a plaque. Bas basically, plaque is equivalent to a bacterial colony. That means that here at this site, one virus landed and that infected the cells, bacterial cells in this case, and cause the lysis of the cells in the form of a plaque. So if you count these plaques, they basically means that these are the number of viral particles or viruses in the original material that we use for infecting this plate, bacterial plate. We can make serial dilution. You know, any uh, because viral particles, the viruses are numerous in number thousands and billions in number in any source. So the sample has to be diluted. So what we use is serial fold, tenfold dilution most, most commonly is used. And then we dilute the virus to certain degrees or enough that only few particles are left in the last dilution. And then few microliter of that last dilution is inoculated like in this, either a cell culture plate or a plate like this. So in a cell culture plate, we can use these plaques also, much like as we see here in bacteriophages, we can use cell culture plate for enumeration of those plaques in the cell culture, for enumeration of the, the viruses. Embryonated hen eggs can also be used for counting the viruses. As you can see here, these white spots here, right, right here, these are called POC legions or plaques. These plaques basically, they are equivalent to bacterial colonies as we saw on the, the bacterial uh, agar plate. So each POC legion or plaque basically is representing one virus. Originally there was one virus here that has given rise to this POC legion. So counting these POC legion basically means that these are the number of particles. And if we know the dilution that we used for 
inoculating this hen egg, we can count or multiply with that factor and count the original uh, sample, the, the how many viruses, par, virus particles per ml that original sample contains. Sometimes we are interested in finding out the infectious dose 50. This is the dose or the number of virus particles that would cause infection in 50% of the population of animals. So in this case, what we do is we make serial, 10-fold serial dilutions, and we inoculate a few microliter of each dilution into a group of animals, and then we study the presence of the virus. If we detect the virus there in the animal, and we can calculate 50% dose. Similarly, sometimes we are interested that how many virus particles are able to kill the animal. So what we do is exactly the same thing. There will be tenfold serial dilutions, and then we would not look the virus there like we saw in the infectious dose 50% calculation. Here we would see that how many animal get killed with what concentration of the virus or with what dilution of the virus. And then at the end, we can statistically calculate what we call lethal dose 50%. So it is the dose or the number of viruses that are able to kill 50% of the population of those animals. This is also a way of knowing the number of particles, which is we call lethal dose 50, LD50 and ID50 are very commonly used in animal viruses. So in summary, viruses could be grown on various uh, cells. Those, those cells could be animals, could be embryonated hen eggs, could be uh, cell culture from plants or animals, and they could be counted. And counted like CPE, if, you know, cytopathic effect in the cell culture, much like colonies or plaques.